Member for McKellar. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Can I firstly start by saying that there is no one in Parliament who does not believe that it should be a core contract with every member of our community that in the twilight of your life that you can live it in relative comfort, security and certainty to income. That is one of the key things that we have believed in as a democracy and as a Liberal Party for a very long time. It was the first Liberal parties of the UK that introduced age pensions that introduced age pensions to ensure that people throughout their lifetime could end their last few years with dignity, because that was what was critically important to what we had to do. Australia, to that extent, and both sides of the House can take credit for this, either through good management or dumb luck, have created the most successful retirement income system in the world. I notice this motion speaks about the fact that we only spend 4 per cent of GDP on, age, on, uh, um, on retirement incomes for Australians, whereas the OECD average is 8 per cent, moving to 9 per cent. This is, in fact, a good thing. The reason that it's a good thing is that we have created through our superannuation system and targeted benefits to those people who are living the last few years of their lives, whether it be the PBS, rental assistance, aged care subsidies, what we have managed to do is create a sustainable system. Australia has a relative, Australia has a position where our unfunded liabilities are less than 5% of GDP. Those of the UK are 900%. Those in the United States are 550% of their GDP. Most West European country or European countries um, do not have the capacity in the future to pay down some of the unfunded liabilities that they have accumulated in the post-World War II years. They are reaching a, situa a critical situation where they will be unable to provide the sort of security and certainty that we take for granted in this country to the generation that comes after us. That's what we have managed to achieve in Australia and that's why it is so critical what we have managed to be able to do. There is no other country in the OECD that is able to provide the sort of sustainability that we have been able to provide to our, to those, to our elderly. And the fact that it is sustainable is something to be celebrated, not bemoaned. Mr Deputy Speaker, the largest civil engineering project in Australia at the moment is the WestConnex project in Western Sydney. It's about $23.5 billion over nine years. In the same time that the New South Wales and Federal Government will have spent $23.5 billion on a road that provides relief to millions of people living in New South Wales and improves their lifestyles um, in a manner and form that cannot be described unless you have actually had to sit in Sydney traffic day in and day out for years on end. Um, we as a federal government will have spent close to $2 trillion on, on welfare and transfer payments in Australia. For people sitting in the bottom 20 per cent of, in, of the income quintile, which includes a lot of people on um, full pensions, for every dollar they pay in tax, um, they receive 900 times the benefit of someone in the top 20 per cent of quintile. Our um, income tax transfer system is 29 times more redistributive than the United States. And people say, oh, well, that's the United States. It's 19 times more redistributive than France. 18 times more redistributive than Canada and 17 times more redistributive than the average of Scandinavian countries. We have one of the largest um, tax transfer systems in the world and it is also one of the best targeted, which is why, um, compared to other nations in the world, the fastest growing income um, group in Australia have been the bottom 20 per cent of income earners, whereas in the United States they haven't received a real income um, increase since the 1970s. Removing um, the capacity for any government, whether it be our government or future governments, to set the deeming rate, which is not just about cash but is across all assets and give it to an independent body, threatens the sustainability of this system. This is why this government was against removing franking credits um, 
franking credits for people in retirement. It's why that we have always stood up for people in retirement and protecting <coughs> their incomes so they can enjoy the last remaining years of their lives.